This story begins in Montevideo, Uruguay in 2014 with Dr. Daniel Fiandra who performed the first procedure on himself to treat a urethral stricture. He convinced Dr. Zabios, who was the first urologist to use this technique. And the first to teach for that. Thank you very much, Dr. Javier Zabios. First things first, which patients can benefit from this technique? The first indications were stenosis of the anterior urethra. But with its use benefits were seen and it extended to the posterior urethra and ureter. For example, case 1, urethral stricture after placement of penile prosthesis. What materials will I need? First, a hydrophilic guide. Second, a preferred balloon. Third, a high pressure syringe and finally, a balloon that delivers the paclitaxel dextran drugs. And I repeat, materials you need. Guide wire, 0.018 by 260 centimeters hydrophilic covered, angle. Pre-dilator ball in diameter, minimum 6 FR, maximum inflated 9 millimeters, can use guide 0.035, total length 135 centimeters, brake pressure 11 ATM, ball in length 6 to 8 centimeters, high pressure syringe, used to fill with a mixture of physiological saline and radio opaque contrast, 50 fiftieths of a percent. This catheter has a total length of 135 centimeters because it was designed for endovascular use, which requires the use of long guides of 260 centimeters and has a width of 7 French. So it sometimes requires the use of a regulated sequential dilator or a predilator balloon. Okay, then let's see how this procedure is carried out in stages. The first step is to locate the area of stenosis and this can be done endoscopically with a cystoscopy in the lithotomy position. Or performed in a supine position and perform a retrograde urethrography marking the area of stricture to be treated with forceps. Carrying out this first evaluation allows us to see the complexity and measure. Remember balloon catheters have a diameter of 4 to 12 millimeters and a length of 4 to 8 centimeters. The second step is to place the hydrophilic guide in the bladder passing the stenotic area. Remember for this take advantage of the maximum its guide. Its hydrophilic coverage hydrate and its angled tip to pass the area. Step 3 is the correct measurement of the stenotic area that helps us choose the material that we are going to use. Step 4 present the pre-dilator balloon in the marked area and then use the most appropriate according to the circumstances. Step 5 purge with saline and introduce the pre-dilator balloon into the area marked on the already inserted guide. Remember the balloon pre-dilator is rude and resistant to breakage versus a lutex and you can use a conventional guide 0.035. Step 6 check that the radiopaque markings of the balloon are outside the marked area, otherwise dilate in stages. Step 7 correct use of the syringe. Purge the same in all your pipes and connections. High pressure syringe. Used by filling with physiological serum mixture in opaque radio contrast, 50 50ths of a percent. Maximum pressure should not exceed 10 atm. At risk of balloon break, in some cases running this risk, you can reach up to 14 16 atm. We perform it in case of firm stenosis with the pre dilator balloon. Which Step 8 Filling of balloon and dilation of the area. It is evaluated with radioscopy. 10 atmospheres, in cases of incomplete dilation, it can reach up to 16 atmospheres. Step 8 Deflate balloon pre-dilator and remove it. Step 9 Introduce a Lutex 3. Paclitaxel dextran balloon and evaluate its correct location with radio opaque marks. The correct use of the balloon involves unpacking, removing protections, purging and using the guide through line 1 and inflation through line 2. Line 1. 
Remember, you can only use long guides of 260 centimeters by 0.018. Remove the straightener from the distal end of the catheter. Purge line 1 and remove the drug shield from the distal end of the catheter. Present the Alutax balloon in the marked area and use more than one Alutax if the patient has multiple or long strictures that cannot be covered. Introduction of the balloon catheter with drugs through the 0.018 guide until the stenotic area without touching the area impregnated with paclitaxel dextran. Step 9. We repeat all the steps that we used with the balloon predilator and here we also check that the radiopaque markings of the balloon are outside the marked area. Purge the syringe. All your pipes and connections. Check a correct connection of the pipes and inflate at 10 atmospheres and we evaluate by fluoroscopy that it inflates correctly and in case of lack of good dilation in any sector, we first wait for the first 5 minutes to pass, which is the minimum delivery time of the drugs to the tissue and then we raise it. Pressure up to 12 or 14 atmospheres until reaching 7 to 10 minutes. He highlighted the minimum delivery time of the medication is 5 minutes at 10 atmospheres, but usually after this time we increase the pressure and wait 2 to 5 more minutes. To finish step 10 consists of disinflate and remove the balloon and perform a urethrography to finish the procedure and check a correct dilation and correct completion of the procedure. We usually do not use lidocaine gel and do not leave a urinary catheter to avoid interfering with the adhesion of the drug to the tissue. We emphasize that it is a simple, reproducible, low complexity and minimally invasive method. Now that we have seen the 10 steps of the method, let's look at some cases. For example, case 2, ureshral stricture after placement of a catheter to control diuresis. It was conducted in Hospital de Clinicos Buenos Aires, urethral section, Argentina. Had an suprapubic probe and a urethra fee where we see the stenosis was performed in decubito supino without endoscopic progress was made from rendezvous type suprapubic access. Then a back dried ear graph was performed where we evaluated the stenotic area and we set it with tweezers and we measure it. 0.018 hydrophilic guide is placed through a suprapubic approach and exits through the urethra, rendezvous. The rectifier is removed from the catheter. The dilator balloon is applied in stages to the area to be treated. Catheter cover is removed and the guide is introduced through line 1, ascending to the area to be treated. Pre-dilator balloon is applied in stages to the area to be treated. It is inflated in stages or sectors. New urethrography shows that the area closest to the bladder needs to be dilated. Balloon is raised again to this area and it is expanded again. This reveals an area of firm narrowing, which requires marking it and raising the pressure to 16 atm. An alternative to this method for firm stenosis is sequential dilators or cutting balloon or endoscopic cutting with holmium laser. successfully functioned the standard method. We deflated and took out the catheter, showing on the outside where it was used for educational purposes. We prepare to use the catheter with paclitaxel dextran alutax 3. We measure the area to be treated. We choose the best catheter size. We present the catheter with drugs and evaluate that it correctly treats the stenotic area. We raise the catheter and evaluate with fluoroscopy that it is correctly placed. We inflate the balloon. First 5 minutes at 10 atmospheres and then we rise first to 14 and then to 16 atmospheres completing 10 minutes.
We wait for the appropriate time, at least five and usually ten minutes. We deflate and remove the catheter. New urethrography now shows well dilated area and with this the procedure ends. Another example case 3, urethral stricture after benign prostate surgery. In Buenos Aires on the other side of the river, we continue learning from our dear brothers the Uruguayans, Cheruas. This is a typical case of distal stenosis with which the technique was described and self-performed by Dr. Fiandria. We can see the posterior urethra correctly unobstructed post-surgery. placement and then applies balloon pre-dilator in area to be treated with the standard method described previously and sequentially paclitaxel dextran releasing balloon is applied. To finish we perform a retrograde urethrography where we can see correct dilation of the stenotic area. I emphasize a quick procedure, 30 minutes of surgical time, simple, reproducible, minimally invasive. Case 4. Rear urethral stricture, large, post turp endoscopic approach, patient in position of lithotomy. Initial urethrography does not clearly define stenosis. Endoscopic access is carried out to define and mark area to be treated. The area of stenosis is reached endoscopically. You can see it correctly. You pass the guide and mark it with forceps. Continue with the regular steps of the standard procedure preparation of the catheter. Removal of rectifier and purged line 1. External presentation of the catheter about the area marked to be treated filling and purged from high pressure syringe with diluted 50-50 contrast after purge and correct connection of line 2. In soft balloon 10 atmospheres by 5 minutes and up to 14 atmospheres in complete 10 minutes. Carry out the standard procedure with all the regulated steps, not innovating at least at the beginning when the operator is learning helps not to skip important steps and for everything to go better. We put in place the catheter and inflate the balloon, first pre-dilator and then the drug carrier paclitaxel dextran alutax 3. Tightness already dilated correctly. We finished with urethra contrast flush confirms correct dilation of the narrow area. that we have seen the 10 steps of the method, you will have realized that it is an easy and reproducible method and above all a very good start as a minimally invasive tool. The initial series of balloon urethroplasty by Dr. Zabios and collaborators report a success rate close to 72% with follow-ups of up to 5 years. So we think it is a very good alternative versus internal urethrotomy via endoscopic with a success of 50% or open reconstructive surgeries that we would leave for eventual failures with this new technique. Let's look at some cases. We performed the first cases all in the lithotomy position and endoscopic evaluation, but as we improved our technique and saw how it is usually performed in Uruguay with Dr. Zabios' team, we changed to a technique without endoscopy and greater radioscopic guidance, leaving the lithotomy position and adopting the supine position. 
finish, I want to thank you for paying attention and having patience these 15 minutes and I want you to take as a message to take home that this procedure is useful, regulated, reproducible, minimally invasive, with low level of complexity, which main indications are in any area stenosis of urethral as well as any area of the ureter, which more perspective. Randomized and controlled studies are required, but it looks like a very good initial approach.